Hello guys, it's Peter from PS Sound and in this short video I'm going to show you a very very fancy sound quality subwoofer that not many people have seen yet although I've shared a picture of it well a few pictures of it um, on my Facebook page I think yeah definitely did and uh, it has raised some interest and everyone was thinking you know Pete what car are you going to Put this one into and they thought that oh, i'm gonna put it in my wife's car i'm like no you you are crazy that single sub costs nearly as much as the whole system i'm planning to put in my wife's car i'm not mad <coughs> all right so here we go guys those of you who have seen this acutin acutin acuton 10 inch sub so now i can tell that it's going to that insignia behind me who is finally back from denmark you could see many, many videos of it. If you haven't, then go to the description. Uh, I put a link there where you can see the whole playlist. Uh, what we did in this car last January and February when we did how many? 53 days. A lot. A lot. A lot. And, and some, of, some of the work has already been done in the car, the soundproofing, the power cable and everything. So that car behind me probably already had like 60 days work where it stands with the existing system but um, I have to have a word about it because people will ask me about it I'm not going into deep details and don't ask me for anything further than what I say right now why are we changing the hardware at the back we are changing it because we had issues with it big problems some of the people worldwide know about it I've never made it public and I'm not going into details I don't want to upset anyone but I can tell you that if you buy the most expensive gear on the planet, always think about what happens if shit, shit goes down. You know, you will need replacement, you will need quick solution. And when you buy something that's made on order and it's not on the shelf, they won't be able to replace it for you. Then you have to wait a long time. And then when something dies twice, not just once, twice, then, uh, you know, you get to the point that... You spend the biggest money you could and, and still it's just not working. And then they, they made it work, but we still had issues with the system and, and they couldn't do much about it. And the owner lost confidence. I can say that. I guess he's sitting right there, but he's not going to talk. So he decided to sell all the hardware, all the amps and the SP from the car. If you don't know what it had, go to the link, check out what we had in it. Very expensive gear. And I was expecting magic from it. Unfortunately, it didn't happen. It doesn't mean that some other people are not happy with what they have if they have the same kit. I'm sure many people are happy with it, but sadly we had bad experience and um, we have to fit new amps and DSP in the car and this new front sub. So let's talk about this because that's this video about. Um, so it's not the case that we really need more bass up front because the, the Acutons in the enclosures I built in the kicks and on the floor they are very clean very accurate and, and they play low enough to integrate to the rear sub where we have a hybrid audio Claris 15 right now um, that I wasn't even the happiest with to be fair we gave as much airspace to it as we could I built like an 80 liter which is close to like probably three cubic foot huge uh, large box for just to get crazy low end extension and um, something closer to an IB experience, what we couldn't do, because in Denmark cars are not really allowed to be cut. Um, but I've heard better. I've heard better performance, output, sensitivity, transient response, and low end, low end extension from subs. And um, it's, it's good, don't misunderstand me, it's great, but I've, I've had better. And this car is, is absolutely the craziest, you know, audio file build I've ever had. So we just, you know, with this build, we look for the absolute best performance. And that's the reason why we are going to fit a front sub as well. Because now everything is Acuton up front. It really deserves an Acuton front sub. Um, because what Acuton drivers do right now on the market is, is something I just can't, I can't do with anything else. Any other driver, they are super accurate. So accurate that most people ca cannot even appreciate it. Um, they cost money. They are very expensive, but for those who want that really, really crazy fine audio file experience, then you can you can get that. And with this, we will have a better 
chance to have a better integrated sub base up front. Um, hopefully we can fit it around the glove box area. That's why we have a 10. Um, they also have an 8 inch version of it, but um, I was talking to Marco, who is the distributor of it um, on the manufacturing side, and I told him we need a 10 because I want to have a better. And there's a big plane flying over me, and it's loud. Come on, get away. I wanted a 10 because I wanted to have the best chance to, to play as low as possible up front. You can never play down to like, you know, 20, 25 hertz with an up front sub because the cabin from that location doesn't have the characteristics to, to support it and to give enough cabin gain under 30 hertz. If we can play down to 35 or 30 hertz, we're good. We are good. Um, so, <clears throat> why is this sub special? As you can see, you don't see a surround on this, right? And it's like a dome-shaped cone. It's a honeycomb aluminium cone with a huge coil, as you can see. So this is now one of the prototypes they've made from the home audio driver, which has a four inch coil. And because of that, they need a wider spider. So you can see the landing now has been modified to make it smaller for a smaller spider, a linear spider. Um, and now because they have a smaller coil, actually they could manage to uh, get better results because they have lower moving mass. The driver is more sensitive, more transient, even better than the home audio driver. And they've achieved so great results that they are going to use some of these features in the home audio drivers as well. And it will be a drop-in upgrade for the home audio people as well. Um, the magnet is also slightly smaller because the home audio driver has S wide uh, magnet as this plate. It looks even crazier, but not if not if this sub wasn't looking sexy. All right? And then people may cry that oh those terminals so much money and they put shit terminals on it like that. Those terminals are absolutely fine. You know what, I would rather have those than spring-loaded terminals. You can solder on it, you can crimp on it, you do whatever you want, it will be better. But the magic is that this driver has a surround inside, if you can see that, hidden. So it's similar to the solution that hybrid speakers have. So the, the, the surround is inverted, but you don't see it from up front. So when the driver moves, the surround is never seen. It's not a crazy high excursion sub, but it doesn't have to be. Um, it's not meant to be for creating, you know, crazy wind like I do in some cars with IB subs, but this is very, very accurate. It's so easy to integrate it. I heard it in Germany in many cars where they had it <clears throat> at the back of the cars and just like, they, they, they remind me to the old Alianti. The Alianti subs, which were very musical and it was easy to integrate them in any system. And they share a few features with that sub, with this honeycomb cone as well. <clears throat> it's uh, definitely a special driver. If you want one of these, then you have to email me and get ready that they are not cheap. Definitely not cheap, but what is what is cheap nowadays is definitely worth spending on this then. I don't mention the name, but I know 18-inch drivers in the car audio market which come with a 3,000 euros price tag and they, uh, they're just bullshit, put it simple. Um, so this is the job, one of the jobs, to fit this front sub in the upcoming two weeks in this car and change the whole amp rack, change the, the hardware, the amps, except we had the Zepco AP uh, two channel amp for the sub in the car that's staying. That was working absolutely fine, right? We had no issue with that amplifier at all. Although we take the, the shaker amp out, you don't need the shaker anymore. It wasn't for him. We just fitted that for love, um, just 
an extra form factor, but it's not really needed. So check out the link, guys, for the description if you haven't seen this build yet. If you have, then you know what to expect from this build. But uh, actually, no, I run around quickly and then you can see uh, what's in it. So this is the beautiful Insignia with proper summer wheels now and summer tires. It looks way better than when I saw it last year because you had the winters on it. Um, so this is the trunk now, half uh, emptied out. We took the side panels out already. And the big, big box we had, which had the, the jigsaw technique I, I, I use. You can, you can see in the separate video how this was built, how the whole MPREC was built and the wiring. So we have to take all that out. We have to keep the main frame because all the panels are staying. We don't have time to rebuild the panels. So whatever we do, it has to fit inside of that rack. That's for sure. Um, that's something probably I've never shown, but that's where we have the LED circuit and controller board and everything uh, that was running the crazy lights that you will see once we put everything back. Um, so all that has to come out. But um, what did I want to say? So that this distribution side probably will have the signal side on this side. That's the Clarus 15 in sealed. Uh, we also have, uh, I can show it from here as well. We have two inch wide bands uh, from hybrid, the L2 SEs in the C pillars. That has a separate video. Um, so they work as differential rear field. And up front, we have nothing in the door. We hate doors. That's where we fitted the Akiton uh, C165s, the automotive version drivers in sealed enclosures using the floor space and the kicks. Um, the Akiton C100 AM mids on the dash and the C30 AM tweeters in the A-pillars. And we had the Fio M11 Pro uh, running on coax straight into the DSP as the main source. Edge unit was integrated only on speaker levels for radio, nothing crazier. That's where the controller was and the new one is going to be. And that's the, the location for the front sub where you have to take it out and see how we can build an enclosure for that beautiful sub. So that's pretty much this, this car. And um, subscribe if you're not subscribed yet, because there's there's more exciting content coming showing how it's done. Because I think I've never had a video showing how to build a front sub box, although it's not magic. You need the same techniques, working with fiberglass or wood, how to mount it, things like that. But we will have a footage of the construction of the front sub box. And we will also talk about what we changed at the end little demo this and that this should be a very sweet system again after all the struggles this car had last year um, so yeah stay tuned feel free to share it comment all the usual things guys and hopefully i can share more content with you very very soon take care